2002 Pontiac Grand Am SE 2.2 liter Ecotec engine. Today we're going to replace the serpentine belt. There's the serpentine belt. You can see the tensioner over here. The pulley on that tensioner has got some pretty good grooves in it. So I'm going to go ahead and just replace that pulley on that tensioner today as well. There's the new one. You're going to want to get the tire off get it jacked up, get a jack stand underneath there, we're going to have to take off this splash shield. There's just a couple or uh, several uh, units that you have to pry out of there then that splash shield will pop off. Then you can kind of see what you're doing in there with that serpentine belt. One of these pry bars is uh, helpful but not absolutely necessary. They're just plastic with some uh, serrations on them so you can just pull them or pry straight back out. We'll do that to those. There's probably one down underneath as well. Let's get this splash shield off. Got those two pulled out. Looks like maybe there was one missing there. There's a couple of bolts underneath here. Take those off. Shield should come off then. There's one down below here. All right, we've got that splice shield off. Now you can get a little better look at the routing of that belt. It'll be a lot easier to put it back on. Most cars are going to have a little diagram that shows you the routing of that serpentine belt. Apparently they think this one's so simple that they don't need one, but I would recommend just making a quick sketch of how the belt is on there. It might help you out later. pretty useful tool for doing serpentine belts is this uh, wrench. It's a bit hard to see down in there where where that ties in to the uh, tensioner but it's about midway through the tensioner. So get it in there, take the tension off, slip the belt off. The bolt for that tensioner is in there real tight. You don't have a lot of clearance in front of it. And that's why this uh, serpentine belt installation tool comes in pretty handy. You can sneak in there with this and get that loose. If you don't have the serpentine belt tool, you can get to it from below. We've got a 15 millimeter box stand wrench on there right now. Taking that bolt out. Took a lot of turns, but I finally got it off of there. Now I'm going to remove this pulley and put a new one on. You might ask, why don't I just put a new tensioner on? Basically because I'm cheap and I'm trying to save a buck, so I got a pulley for 20 bucks. This tensioner is like 65. Nothing fancy there, just undo that bolt and slides off, put the new one on, tighten it down. Getting that tensioner back up in there is a real bear. <laughs> be better if it was a two-man job. What I ended up doing was coating the back of it with grease. So when I got it to uh, fit into the hole, there's a little pin there. You got to get the pin lined up. And when it popped into the slot, the grease kind of held it in place. Then I was able to get a couple threads going. Now it's just a matter of fighting that bolt in eighth of a turn by eighth of a turn. I'm working the new serpentine belt on. Another case where it'd be nice to have two people, but in this case, I just uh, got the tension on there, put a wire tie on it, was able to then do it myself. Go ahead and start it up, make sure everything's working okay before you take the time to put the splay shield back on. It's good to have some of these on hand because you usually break a couple taking them out. This is the old pulley, and the reason I replaced it is it had some pretty pretty deep grooves in here. It appears that it can go on either way. Actually, 
she never wants to see you again.